Any of you Lego masters? No? Yeah. We, uh, we actually had a, a Lego master uh, come and take uh, uh, a sample of our DSS 7000, which was a, a storage product that we developed um, based upon actually one of the largest, largest uh, IT consumers in the world that typically issues RFPs for exabytes a quarter. Um, you can imagine how a cheap and deep storage solution is something that would appeal to them. So um, they had a couple requirements that they wanted to see. They wanted to have as many three and a half inch spindles as possible in a 4U space. They didn't want any external cabling, so they wanted their servers within the box. Um, it had work in a 35C operating environment. Um, they wanted everything within reason to be a FRU. So everything to be replaceable, the server itself, the power supply, <coughs> the hard drives, the fans, everything serviceable. So um, we had some competition that was out there that was in the 76, 78 drive in a 4U uh, server. But we wanted to really break the mold. So we came up with a 90 drive system, two servers in the back, and we also wanted to obviously make it cost effective. Um, so one of the things that we did is we leveraged the R430 motherboard. Um, you don't have the NRE for doing a brand new motherboard. Um, you, uh, you're, you're leveraging the best in breed from uh, management software. We have iDRAC on there. And we also tried to make it, um, like I said, as efficient as possible from a thermals. We did a lot of modeling on that. It's, uh, it has uh, either Avago controllers in there, or you can even do PMC controllers. The, uh, the, um, the nice thing about the, the system, like I said, everything is uh, hot serviceable. You have a dual folding um, access to the, the back drives. You have the fans. Um, you have, you can remove the, the server. As you can see, it's a representative. Um, and, and it does work in the, uh, in the 35C operating environment. Um, this this um, product also has the ability to um, do independent 45 uh, to 45 drives to one server or one server to 90 hard drives. In the 45 to 2 model, um, those are independent power domains. So if you had to service one side of it, it doesn't affect the other. Um, and then in the 1 to 90, obviously, you can remove a couple of the power supplies. It has redundant power supplies. Um, and the uh, we think it, it is probably the cheapest gigabyte per dollar solution out there for a for you storage server. Any questions on this one? Does Nutanix have a model for that? Um, I, I, I don't believe Nutanix has a model for this. Anybody, who, anybody else you partner with that might be thinking of using it? Um, uh, yes, I don't know if I can speak about it publicly, but uh, Louis, Louis has this box. Louis Newcomb, um, who presented earlier, he has this box and he rattled off several partner um, that he is working with. So uh, yes, we are working with a, a storage stack partner. John Mannix, um, there were some announcements back in August and September about that partnership. The, the the, the drives are SAS connected to the server? It, it is a, so there is a base board at the bottom that right. has all of the um, connections dri the drive, drive connections. It is tw uh, six gigabit SAS to each of the drives. And it's like Mega Raid or something like that, LSI. You have a um, PMC expander, and then at the, on the server itself, you do have, yeah, a Mega Raid controller. How many Ethernet ports do you have for uh, each one of the servers? The server itself, since it is the R430 motherboard, it has the four LOM 
one gigabit LOMs on it. You can obviously, it has three PCIe slots and a MES connection, so you can add 10 gigabit connections on there. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we have the uh, dual socket, so we can go, I guess it's 26, 2660, 2670 uh, processors on there. Can I disable the hardware rate on it? And just use it for cash, cash pass through? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Or, or <coughs> other yes. options? It, yeah. We don't use, yeah. It, it isn't really used as hardware rate. It's, it's an object store. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, so you can think about Ceph, Ceph workloads. Um, and, and, and everything is hot swappable. You can kind of extend it out of the rack. And Absolutely. So the, the rails come here. It extends. You have a cable management arm here. Um, if you want to access the front, access the back. Now, if you want to pull the servers, you obviously go to the hot aisle, pull right. the servers. One of the things that is interesting about it in the, in the, the 45 spindles, um, things that we're actually looking at that we think are, are interesting from a tiered, tiered storage model is you replace four of those spin, or five of those spindles with SSDs and you have kind of a, a built-in tier for caching. Connect multiple devices. Connect multiple devices. Stack many node of them to node together. Interconnect. Yeah, node to nodes. Node to node. So, uh, interesting uh, about that is in the 1 to 90 model, so if you were going to do that, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to get the most storage possible behind a single node, right? So, if one server to 90 isn't enough, we actually do have some concepts that show this. Uh, you have external SAS ports going down to another one that has um, an expander in it. And then, yes, you could, you could do that. Is that a supported offering right now? No, it is not. Can you do it in the lab? Yes, you can. But uh, it would be a really SAS storage only. When I do the extended, if I do the extender down to an external JBOT or whatever, mm -hmm. do I have to buy the whole solution again and, and connect them together or can I get it without all of the additional what's that it depends on your compute layer that's true but if I just want to do storage can I buy it at a minimum amount of components inside as far as like processing and things like that or does so, that not even make sense it, it is not an offering and it's not supported you it's not an offering today okay. sure. um, the the offering today is a dual server 45 to each what you'll see in the next very short while, I'll say next couple months, is the 1 to 90 offering. That 1 to 90 is actually being sold today to um, DCS customers. To go to the broader market, there's extra validation that, that we needed to do because when we validate for DCS, it is very specific to the customer's configuration, their workload, their drivers, OS. So, now when we take this to a broader market, we obviously do a lot more testing. The first rollout is the two server config. We, we felt that that uh, appealed to a broader set of customers. The, the archival or the real cold storage, um, there are certain customers that that appeals to, so we are coming out with that. That was the second offering. I think you'll see that before, <coughs> before May, we'll say. And um, in, in this configuration, is there a way to design for uh, the two servers to act as high availability? Um, that would have to be at a software layer above. The, there, is no, there is no direct connection between those two servers. Um, and you got to think about the, the customers that this was originally built for. You know, they're, they're looking at more, their HA or their high availability is based upon the whole model, the cloud model of, of the object storage, the, um, you know, they have maybe three layers of replication, but it's, you know, deduped around, um, around the data center. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. Just um, real quickly talk uh, about the DSS 1500, 2500 line. Um, this, so, the storage box, as I mentioned, was, was derived from a hyperscale customer that we were built a solution for. 
and we felt it appealed to a broader set of customers, so we brought it to that mainstream offering. Conversely, the DSS 1500-2500 series, that was more around, you had the PowerEdge R630, R530 um, offerings, um, but there were a set of customers that said, hey, for those that want all the levels of IDRAC management and for all the, you know, the near-field communication that you get, that's great. We don't need that. We want something more simple. We're going to go white box if Dell doesn't have something like that. And we said, okay, let's, let's try to simplify the design. Let's simplify the management to just what you're asking for. Let's optimize the cost. Well, the biggest way to optimize cost is volume. So again, we look at leveraging the R430, R530 motherboards. It's one of the highest running volume uh, motherboards in the world. So we take that, but we try to you know, take off some stuff that <coughs> isn't necessarily needed by some of these scale-out customers. We look at the IDRAC management, and we say, what do these customers really want? You know, a lot of them saying, hey, we just want basic IPMI. That's all we need. So, this is where this offering kind of comes from. It, it's, it's more about meeting that scale demand. Um, one of the big things about these customers is they want this open checkbox marked. Um, and I know Brian mentioned uh, Redfish. Redfish is a new management standard that's in DMTF. The interesting story about that, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Well, I'll do it now. So our G5 product, which is our rack scale product, is we were taking that out to these hyperscale customers, and we had management within this, we started getting feedback from them. And they were like, well, I, I like what you're doing, but what I really want for management is I want a kind of next generation IPMI. It needs to be able to manage at the rack. I want it more secure. I, I want it modern. I want it restful. Um, the fortunate thing about it in, in that conversation is HP was hearing the same thing, you know, it's, and what we both heard from the customer is if you're not doing what Dell is doing or if you're not doing what HP is doing, if it's unique, it's of no value to us. So that's when HP, Dell, Intel, Microsoft, Emerson got together and we defined the next generation of management standard and it was called Redfish. It was announced at IDF in 2014. It got brought into DMTF under the server platform management forum. Um, it was in that for one year, and it came out as a, a ratified standard 1.0 at IDF 2015. And now, these products, along with um, select 14, uh, 13G products uh, with Broadwell, will have the Redfish management interface. Um, this is going to be the, the next generation of management, and I'll talk a little bit about how it's being used with Intel rack scale architecture in a minute. Um, any questions on these? One quick question. Um, how much does it affect your margin on what you, make, what you sell them for, what you make, make out of them compared to the other products? So I don't think it's any secret that the enterprise space where you have um, a m much more management features, much more broad validation, um, that the margin in the enterprise space is, is higher than in the scale-out space. So how does, how does it affect your margin? Well, the, mar the margin isn't as high. But that's kind of the, the game we have to play in. I mean, that space is highly, highly competitive. Um, I mean, it's a huge CAGR also. I mean, you're looking at 20% CAGR in that area that we've seen over the last five years. Um, you know, are we going to get huge uh, margin on this product? No, but if we don't play in it, we don't get anything. Right? But do you think that customers will get comfortable with them fairly quickly and that you'll start pushing down the... No, I think, I, th I, think there's a specific, I think there's a specific set of customers that can get comfortable with it. But those customers, if you look at the, the hyperscale customer set, um, there's a lot, especially the largest of the large, they want to do it themselves, right? I mean, from a management side, there's no secret. They want to do it themselves, and they really don't value management from 
Dell, HP, or anyone. They, I mean, it's, it's what they want to do. Then you get to the next set of guys, and it's the guys I said want to be cloudy. They aspire to be like the largest. Um, I think they would like to own it themselves, but they also realize that it's hard. I mean, to develop the management stack, to maintain that management stack, um, and, and OpenStack actually is a great example of that. You know, they want to go bring that in. They want to implement it. They, they say, well, we'll go get a kickstart from Mirantis or bring somebody like that in. Um, and after that, we'll take it over. And then they realize, this is hard. And I don't have 60 PhDs to throw at it um, that maybe a Google does. Um, so I, I think it's still going to be incumbent upon um, companies like Dell to provide a strong foundation uh, of that management capability, even if it is simplified. Then you're going to have the customers, once you get beyond the scale customers and you get back to the enterprise guys, they just want a one throat to choke kind of solution, right? They, from top to bottom, they want that, that near field communication. They want that open managed essentials. Um, that is something, and they want it all supported from one company, which Dell can provide. Um, these set of customers are a little bit more rogue, if you will. You know, they, they go out and they say, we're going to do it bare bones um, and we're going to try to do our own management. And it, some will succeed and some will have to come back <coughs> to a more uh, feature-rich management stack. Before I get to the next slide, actually, before I get, I wanted to show one other product. Uh, just, well, this, we this, not Lego. <laughs> this one is not Lego. <laughs> hey, I can pick this one up. If this one wasn't Lego, I couldn't pick that one up. Um, just build them out of Lego then. Why, yeah. why, I know. Why build them out of metal? Just build them out of Lego, it's easy. <laughs> Here's a dirty little secret. The metal is significantly cheaper than the Lego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't believe that. Um, so, you know, one of the things I talked about, density optimized, uh, in, in this space we've been building, this doesn't show up, but we've been building half-width sleds, even third-width sleds um, for like our rack scale infrastructure. Um, this is an example of a half-width sled that actually goes into a 4 and 2U um, box. Um, this particular one is a dual socket. Um, you can see it's, it's rear accessible. Um, the interesting thing about this is this is an ARM server. Um, so 64-bit ARM, dual socket. And this is uh, kind of the things that, like I said, you have to keep the innovation coming. You have to keep looking at technology. Um, and one of the things that about ARM over the last uh, couple years, it's, it's had a ways to mature. I mean, the ecosystem has needed to mature for a while, but what it's done is it's spawned competition, not only within the ARM segment, but within Intel. I think ARM has, has forced Intel to take a hard look at some of their products and their offerings. I think uh, Xeon D is probably a response to some of the ARM offerings. So. You know, just like competition is making us think outside the box and, and come up with new solutions, um, definitely ARM and the ARM ecosystem is, is keeping Intel on its toes as well. <laughs>